Hi everybody, Bob here and welcome back to the channel. Today is kind of a special video for me. We've recently surpassed the 10,000 subscriber milestone, which is amazing. I just want to thank all of you guys for the support you've given on the channel. Hopefully you didn't miss the video, but I recently announced I'd be doing a giveaway and you could enter to win one of two watches and some other goodies in that video. If you did enter, today is the day we're going to draw those two winners. Also in that video, I asked if anybody had any questions for a Q&A. We were going to do a Q&A and then draw the winners and that's what's happening today. So we're going to start off with the Q&A. Got lots of good questions and then we will draw the winners. Question number one comes from Chuck Bryant and he asks, what type slash brand of watch do you wear when you're not wearing a review watch? Personally, I've got all these beautiful mechanical watches and nine days out of 10, I'm probably wearing a Casio, usually a Pro Trek because I love the functionality. So I am fairly regularly wearing a micro brand or different review watch, but I try to go through my own collection, go through the rotation. I have some standouts though. There's two watches, the watches that get easily the most wrist time. And one of them I've owned for about five years now. It's the king of the wrist time here. And that is the G-Shock 5610. This just feels like it's a part of me when I have it on. I like it for its functionality too. And it looks great on wrist, very comfortable. There's a second watch that I picked up this year, and it's a close second as far as this year's wrist time goes, and that is one of the new tunas with the Sapphire. I wear this one also a whole lot. I would say I prefer automatics and mechanicals, but I have a fairly active lifestyle, so these grab-and-go quartz and G-Shocks are kind of hard to pass on some mornings. Question number two comes from Peter2704, and he asks, how did you ever get comfortable talking straight into the camera? And I will say that that is a work in progress still. I don't feel 100% natural on camera, but it is getting better. When I first started the channel, I didn't really feel like I was talking to anybody. There wasn't really that many people watching. But now that I've gotten to know a bunch of you guys, even in person, it just feels like I'm talking to friends more. So it's a lot more comfortable and it feels more natural. But I, I still need to make some progress in this because it's not 100% yet, but hopefully we get a little bit better over time. Next question is from Glenn Rainey. And thank you guys all for the questions, by the way. He asks, okay, one piece, limit 1,000 USD, but you are not allowed to sell it and need to wear it 50% of the days. What would you choose? I have a watch in mind, and it's a watch that I regretfully sold because I did wear it almost 50% of the time, and it probably is my favorite watch I've ever owned in the price range, and that was my... Damasco DS30, that is such a good do-it-all watch. I wore that doing just about everything, and it was in mint condition when I sold it. The hardened steel is really resilient to scratches. There was, wasn't a mark on that watch at all anywhere, but I missed that one, and I could see maybe rebuying in the future. That is got to be my number one watch in that price range I've ever owned. This one comes from fellow Canadian Kevin Wagner, and he says, Bob, what model is your drone, and does it support an infrared camera? My drone is just a very small one. It's the Mavic Mini. Comes in at, it says right on the side here, 249 grams, and here in Canada, any drone under 250 grams, there's not a whole lot of restrictions. Because this is so small and light, it really can't handle the payload of a camera, like an infrared camera. If you go to the DJI site, though, they do have drones that can handle that sort of payload. They do get up in price once you're getting into the bigger ones, and there are more restrictions, but they are available. Next question comes from RK516, and him and I have been chatting off and on through email and the comments for probably quite a few years now, but 
He asks, what is your favorite budget micro brand? And that's a tough one because there is a whole bunch of good ones. My favorite micro brand, and it's not just to do with the watches, it's to do with the people too right now, or at least one of my favorites is SWC, and they've just recently released an excellent budget quartz field watch in titanium, the Arc. I did a video on it a month or two back, and that's such a good watch. The thing with SWC versus some other micro brands is they just feel so stable. They're not a big giant company, but the way they operate the business, the way they build their watches, I just feel really confident in recommending them as a brand. Okay, so this one's kind of related to the last question. This one comes from Keith White and he asks, my question is what field watch under $500 do you recommend? And I would have to recommend the Bunker from SWC. And SWC doesn't know I'm saying this stuff. I just really like the brand. But that watch is hands down the best field watch I've ever experienced in the price range. There's lots of great watches, uh, comparables like the Khaki that have maybe some more heritage than the Bunker or than SWC does as a brand. But pound for pound, that was the best watch I've had hands-on experience when it comes to field watches at the $500 price range. Next up is from a really good friend of mine, Jamie, over at the channel, Mad Rock Watches and Adventure. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, go check him out. He's got some really fun videos. This is where the hardball questions start here. And he asks, what watch would you wear while visiting a nudist beach and explain why? Well, I read this question and the answer is obvious. This one comes from Rob Tamblin and he says or asks, I think I've heard you say you are a Leafs fan. That's the Toronto Maple Leafs, my local NHL hockey team. And he's asking why subject yourself to all of that disappointment? We're going to have to do a wardrobe change for this one. Hang on. Oh, man. Yeah, I must be a glutton for punishment because I am a huge Leafs fan. I just went to my first game in forever since all this lockdown stuff the other day has been going on and they got whipped pretty hard by the Kings 5 to 1. They have been playing better lately though, so things are looking on the brighter side, but they kind of always flop in the playoffs but we will see rob what's your team you better not be a habs or a bruins fan or this is not gonna work this relationship is not gonna work <laughs> this one comes from mr bacchus and he says i think my favorite videos are when you get to take your watches on an adventure my question is any interesting travel plans coming up and I've had a lot of people ask, why is there even travel in the title of my, my YouTube channel? Time to go travel and time pieces. A lot of people are kind of new to the channel over the past couple of years, but when travel was easier to do, that was a big part of the channel. And I definitely want to make that a big part of the channel again. And we finally have our first international trip booked. That's happening on the... 10th of December, we're going to Jamaica. My brother-in-law is, he lives here in Canada, but he's from Jamaica and owns a couple of retail stores down there. So we're going down, him and I and the wives for a visit. We're going to get out, do some exploring, do some beach time, and probably help him out with a couple of things at his stores too. But the camera will be coming along. So this will be the first international travel video in quite some time and hopefully lots more to come in the future. So another travel related question, and this comes from Central Park Saga. Do you have a location which you wish to visit but have yet to go? There's quite a few, but there is probably one that is at the top of that list. My wife and I have a kind of a bucket list of travel destinations. And number one for both of us, I think, is Japan. I think Tokyo would just be amazing to visit. That city looks just awesome. I'd love to do a little bit of watch shopping while I was there too, but I'd like to get out of the city and explore some, enjoy some of the great eats. There's quite a few places on the list, but Japan I think is number one. 
back to the watch related questions and this one comes from Sean Lowe and quite a few of you guys ask sort of a question along the same lines but he just asks what is your current grail watch and I have a couple on the list. I don't really use the term or like the term grail watch but there's two that aren't immediately attainable for me. One is a, and there's a few actual models, but Grand Seiko Spring Drive. There's one in particular that's recently caught my eye. It might even be sold out by now, but the model number I just have here is SLGA007. I think that watch looks amazing. It is gorgeous. I haven't seen it in person yet, but from the photos, it looks just awesome. So that would be one that I'd love to own that probably won't happen anytime in the near future. Another watch that's a bit more affordable, a bit more attainable that I love, that a lot of people hate, and I at some point have to own one of these watches, and that is the Tudor PO1. I don't know what it is about that watch. It's definitely got an odd look, a different design that you don't normally see, and I love it because of that. So that's a watch that I also have on the radar that uh, I'd like to pick up sometime. So hopefully this isn't getting too long. There's a lot of questions and a lot of really good questions that I want to get to, but we'll try to get through them as quick as we can here. This is from Exhale Vapor. He asks, what is your favorite watch brand now? And I'd have to say my favorite brand, if you asked me a couple of years ago, it would have been Seiko easily, but I think my favorite brand currently is Zinn. I gravitate to the Toolier watches and they are about as tooly as they get. I'm actually wearing my 157 right now. I love this watch. A runner up would have to be Damasco. They are both German brands and I like what they put out too. I've owned a number of watches from each of those brands and they've got some really interesting tech they put into their watches that nobody else is doing quite the way they are. So probably number one is Zinn for me though right now. This one's probably the first ever food-related question that I've had in uh, one of our, my Q&A videos. And the question's from Fly Guy Crew Wear. He asks, what is your favorite meal to cook when you're dining in-house? And I will say my wife is hands down the better cook than me, but I have two specialties. One's quite easy, and that is lobster. I love to just steam up a couple of lobsters it's a bit of a mess to eat, but uh, we really enjoy lobster in the house here. And uh, again, very simple to cook, but one of our favorites. The other dish that I've been working on the last couple of years is barbecuing the tomahawk steak. I found a video on YouTube back when I was first uh, trying it, and I've been sort of tweaking the recipe over the last couple of years. So that's one that I've gotten pretty good at and uh, really enjoy that as a dish every once in a while too. So just a couple questions left, but this one I think is kind of important to get to. This comes from a very young new collector. His name is Michael Trang. He says, I'm in high school and I don't have much to work with. What are some watches that you recommend with a tight budget? Watches that will build my collection. I have an F91W and a Timex Expedition Scout. So first of all, those two watches you have are excellent watches to own at this stage in your collecting career. I have a couple of suggestions and you're going to probably hear the same suggestions from a lot of different people, but one, and it's for good reason because they're good watches. One suggestion is the Casio Duro or the Marlin it's called as well. That's a fantastic dive watch and a dive watch would fit right into the rotation with the watches you currently have. That can be had at a fairly good price and uh, just, just a fantastic watch for the money. If you want to maybe look into going down the automatic road, which would be probably a good option too for you, the Ray 2 or the Mako 2 from Orient can be had at very good prices as well. And then you have yourself an automatic in the uh, trio of watches. So thanks a lot for the question. I really enjoyed answering that one and welcome to the watch community. Definitely keep in touch, Michael. So the last question I'm gonna answer is asked by U5FB. Do you have an ultimate goal with the channel since it will hit 10K soon? And my 
only real goal with the channel is just to have fun. A couple of things I'd like to see happen more is I'd like to get out of here, get out of the little basement studio I have uh, for some more uh, adventure travel videos. That's probably my biggest goal actually to do a bit more of that. It's been a bit of a struggle with that the last couple of years, but things are looking up now. So that's a big one, but the bottom line for me, this is all about having fun and hopefully you guys can have some fun too. So before we get to the giveaway, I just want to thank everybody that contributed questions for the Q&A. There was a ton that I just couldn't get to or this video would have been way too long, but uh, thanks so much. Now let's switch things up. We'll take a look at what is up for grabs in the giveaway and draw the winners. Okay, so there is two prizes up for grabs. The first I'm going to draw is the AV8, and then we will do the G-Shock. The G-Shock is also going to come with some straps. The AV8 will come with some straps as well as a watch strap roll that I'm going to show you in a minute. One of the cool things with this collaboration is a portion of the proceeds go to the RBL. These are limited to 1,000 watches. But this is a review model, and because of that, it's actually numbered one, or sorry, rather zero out of 1,000, which I'm thinking kind of adds to the cool factor a bit. If you're interested, I will leave a link to the video where we looked at this watch in the description below. Along with the AV8, we've also got this watch strap roll. It looks a lot like a watch roll, but... It is actually designed to store straps. This is made by Vario, and we're gonna also include three straps from Vario. The strap roll uh, is actually really handy. I've been using mine to store knives, pens, some other EDC gear, as well as some straps. So this is something you might get some use out of. The winner of the AV8, we're gonna do the draw right now, is... Nicholas Villian. Congrats, Nicholas. Hope you enjoy the new watch. Stick around for a minute and I'll let you know how to claim the prize. Next prize is the blue and gray Casio. This one was given to me specifically for the giveaway by my authorized dealer, Jem Bijou. The owner, Sam, has contributed hugely to the channel the last few months by giving me access to tons of really cool watches. So, Thanks to him for hooking us up with this G-Shock. Along with the watch will also be three straps from Vario. There's two NATOs and a rubber strap. Thanks to Vario as well as AV8 too for helping make this giveaway happen. And the winner of the G-Shock is... Joda, congrats on the new watch. I just need both of the winners to reach out to my email at time to go 1978 at gmail.com with your shipping info, and I'll get these headed your way as soon as possible. I'm going to give you guys till December the 1st, 2021 to reach out to me. That way, if uh, you guys don't reach out, I'll do a redraw at that point in time and get these on to someone else. Also, I am covering shipping, but any taxes or duties are the responsibility of the winners. One last person I just need to thank before I let you guys go is Dave from Just The Watch. He helped us get to 10K quicker than expected with a community post the other day that got us over the hump almost immediately. So thanks a lot, Dave, for that. I was really appreciated. So that is it, everyone. Thanks to all that entered. Really appreciate the support here on the channel from each and every one of you. It's been amazing. Have a great one, everybody, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. <music>